want to hear another video? Hey, man, we got Larry Bird, Travis Hawk, and Michael Jordan that backfired just two years later. Nah, look, I got a lot of Larry Bird fans, got a lot of Jordan fans, bro. So I, I need y'all to, you feel me, watch it with me. You feel me? And, and you, let, let's see what, because y'all always saying Larry Bird always doing Jordan bad, bro. So we're going to see how Larry Bird trash talking did him bad, bro. Just two years later, you feel me? Look, Jordan was a rookie. So we're going to see. We're going to see. But before we get to this, make sure I subscribe. Make sure I like and comment. We want to roll to 2,000 subscribers, bro. I know I keep saying that. We growing, though. We at 1.8K. I appreciate all the love support y'all been giving me, bro. And shit, let's get into the video. How Larry Bird went from disrespecting Michael Jordan to calling him God in just two years. God. As we all know, Larry Bird is one of the most savage players in NBA history. The shots, the trash talk, the passing, and his overall swagger helped transform the league, along with his partner in crime, Magic Johnson. Oh God is actually crazy. So this story looks at how Larry Bird went from disrespecting MJ to calling him a god in just two years, a look at the first time Larry Bird met Jordan and trash talked him, even before playing an NBA game. Wait, the very first time he was trash talking? Oh yeah, we got to tap in with this one. The very first meeting, you were already talking. You guys seem to okay. love these types of videos where I include interviews, stories, and highlights all mixed in together. And I think this one is a great story. So if you'd like to support the channel, I'd love if you could hit that like button as it helps me out so much and it only takes one second of your time. Lastly, I hope everybody's doing okay within this tough time. Stay strong. Scrub. I know some families are doing it really hard at the moment, so hopefully this video will take your mind off everything for just a few minutes. Anyway, here's the story. We begin all the way back in 1984. Before being a member of the Chicago Bulls, Jordan would actually participate in the 1984 Olympic team. This is where he'd first be able to showcase how great of an elite talent he truly was. He would play Damn. up against NBA players. Wait, ain't that Hold on, let me see that. Did the ball just the back first? He truly was. He what would play up against NBA players, NBA superstars, and future legends of the game. He would dominate them. At that time, Larry Bird was coming off an MVP season during the 1983-84 season with averages of 24 points, 10 rebounds, 6.5 assists, and nearly 2 steals per game. That's solid, he, bro. along with Magic Johnson, were the stars of the league. Bird, at this time in his career, was an NBA champion. He was named the finals MVP. I think he was an NBA legend at that around that time, shit. And the regular season MVP. There was nobody in the league who was better than him. He was 27 years of age by this stage, and he was on top of the NBA landscape. But he was hearing about this kid named Mike hey. Jordan. The kid out of North Carolina with freakish athleticism. We all know Jordan as being one of the most ruthless and cutthroat players ever, but at this stage in his career, it was Larry Bird who wanted to make a point. It was at this time that Bird was on top of the NBA landscape. He was the man, and the one who had seen success in the league most recently. The Celtics were again ready to follow their leader in the battle. We knew we had the best player in the world on our team. We knew Larry was, and no question about it, he was the best player in the world. And their strategy was straightforward. Ugh. The game was very simple. Get the ball to Larry and get out of his way. The movement so was entering crazy. the 1984 NBA season, the league had agreed it would have the Olympic team versus the NBA <laughs> All-Stars team during the offseason to prepare the college kids that would go on to play for gold in the 1984 Olympics. And the 1984 Olympic team was interesting because future Hall of Fame is damn. That was a lot of that was a lot of faces, bro. I didn't go a lot for a team. Like what? Like what? They split it in half or something? Like how? How did all these players play? Or was they like scrimmage players, bro? Like what? Charles Barkley, John Stockton, and Karl Malone were all cut from the team, leaving damn. the main star MJ to dominate the 1984 Olympics. And there's a story going around. Oh, but the, it was Olympics, though. But how does that... Hey, somebody tell me how that how that really ran, though. Because that was a lot of players. Did they all actually play in the Olympics, bro? Or was it like 15 players play this game, 15 other players this game? Around the Charles Barkley getting cut was because of head coach Bobby Knight, who knew that Charles Barkley was the second greatest player on that roster. So I go there, so we go, we got 120, and like I said, it's probably 30 or 40 Hall of Famers, but everybody who ever played 
and NBA in the last 30 years was there. Damn. But to prove to me that you want to play on this team, you're going to have to lose nine more pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Barkley was an RP. 6'6", 265, that's, that's solid, though. That's solid, though. Look at Zion now. He around that, but I think he weighed a little bit more, though. And he still be yamming and slamming, bro. I, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Him driving to the paint, 6'6", 300 pounds, I'm moving out the way. Bro has incredible vert, bro. He's explosive. He's, bro. And I'm pretty sure Charles Barkley was the same way. That That's just a train running your way. Nah, I'm straight. Because... Shit, it's, it's a lot of taller guys that's like seven foot that's 210. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy. P-I-A. Royal pain in <laughs> And then they finally cut me. And I was pissed at Bobby Knight because he never gave me a fair chance because I, I was the best, second best player there by far. Damn. So I'm going to the airport. It's me, Carmelo, John Stockton, and Terry Porter. And Sonny says, hey, I talked to John Thompson. I said, yeah, what did he say? He says, you were the second best player there. I say. I said, yeah, coach, I was the second best player there. Jordan and first. He said, who was the best player there? I said, coach, I just saw the best basketball Jordan. player I ever seen in my life. His name Come is Michael now. Jordan. Come on now. We already knew that. <laughs> we already knew that, bro. All seriousness, though. Like, Jordan been the best player since this nigga was born, bro. Like, they were scared of him. He's from North Carolina. And the story goes that Bobby Knight clashed with Charles Barkley and was worried that he'd mess up his plan to make Jordan the main guy and the star of the 1984 Olympics, oh, which wow. is the reason why he got cut, and Jordan did become that star. Coach Knight, even at that time, thought that MJ was the greatest player he'd ever seen before even playing an NBA game. Uh, he's the best athlete. Wait, he's there is no way they actually did that, though, because he's the second best player. He, they cut him because they... They knew that Jordan wanted to, like, he wanted to, he wanted Jordan to shine, so he cut Barkley because of that. Brody, why not have two stars on the team? Bro, they got to work with each other. Feel me? That's up to the players, you know what I'm saying? The dream team, they was all superstars. They all did their own thing on their own team and still made it work. That's, you feel me? That's why it's called the dream team. And Charles was a part of it. Come on, nah best competitors is one of the most skilled players and, and that to me makes him that was the Ill best move. basketball player that i've ever seen play Ill you move. have to understand that back in 1984 the olympic teams used to consist of college players due to the olympic teams not allowing nba players to be a part of it until 1992 where nba players were eligible to play and therefore we saw the dream team so they used to have scrimmages with nba all-stars versus nba college kids to prepare the college kids to play in the olympics this is where Bird and Jordan had their first interaction. Bird oh, had heard of Oh, here we go, y'all. I've been waiting five minutes for this, bro. Five long minutes, bro. Let's get to it, bro. Kid, a kid named Mike Jordan, but didn't truly know how good he was, well, until this night. Beyond an acute awareness of his own commercial potential, Bird waged psychological warfare at the drop of a ball. The 84 Olympic team is playing an exhibition game against a bunch of pros, including Larry Bird, and they were in the warm-ups. And a ball bounced down from the college end of the court to the pro end. And Michael Jordan went down to chase it. The ball happened to be picked up by Larry Bird. And Michael went up a few feet away from Larry Bird and held out his hands. And Bird took the ball and fired it back down the court over Jordan's head. As if to say, you're not only not getting this ball, I don't give a damn who you are. Larry Bird knows. That old dishes, babe. Hey, I mean, Larry Bird started something. You feel me? That See, this is where it all started, y'all. Larry Bird tossed the ball over Jordan's head. And he basically said, F you. More of the story, he said, F you, bro. Exactly who this guy is and what's going to happen in the next few years. And he wants to get every edge he can get right now. Damn. Knowing Jordan, this would have fueled him. Michael Jordan is the type of player that fuels off energy like this. And Larry Bird right. was the star. You're right. So how was he as a rookie, though? Like, I, I seen him play in the 90s, and that, and that energy he's seeing now was crazy. But how was he in his early age, though? Like, was he really on that? Or was he just, like, rookie mindset? Like, okay, 
Let me let me just be a good sport. Player in the league. Nothing was more exciting than a Bird vs Jordan face off before even playing in an NBA game. Live from the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis, Indiana, it's the Olympic basketball team versus the NBA stars. Let's take a look at these starting lineups out here now. Bobby's been changing around. You see Jordan, Tisdale, Perkins, Robertson, and Fleming. One change from what he did there in the second half yesterday and for the All NBA I see is Jordan on that one. side. I'm not going to lie. Thomas and Paxson, not a bad lineup for any NBA team. These weren't just any NBA players that that 1984 Olympic team was playing up against. These teams had players like Magic Johnson, Larry Damn. Bird, Kevin McHale, Isaiah Thomas, James Worthy, Clyde Drexler, and... Clyde was on the team? Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. There's no way they should've... Th didn't they lose this game to them? Yeah, there's no way they should've lost that, bro. I don't care if it's Jordan or not, bro. He's a, he's a one-man team. He's great, bro. But all y'all stars can't beat not one player, bro. That's ridiculous, bro. Utterly ridiculous. Many others. These were the best players in the league. But it was Michael Jordan who was oh the my one God. that showed out. He Even killing he ki he killing Larry Bird already, nigga. In the league. Look, look, every Larry Bird fan in my video watches, this, bro. I should put it in slow motion. For but it was you. Michael look Jordan who Ugh, was the one here. that showed out. Lace before key. he'd entered the league. And this is when Larry Bird first took real notice about how great Jordan this would shit, eventually this become. Shit. Good feedback. This is he laid him Michael too. Jordan with that incredible first step. Michael Jordan! Oh my god! Nigga, wait, who was that? Is that James? Really handling pressure pretty well. There's the, the quality is... Now they got Alfred in there. Alfred back in there. Damn. See, this is kind of shocking to me. Jordan going and, stupid. And the way they did it, it was to me too, because I didn't expect him to play this well after that game yesterday. The guys there trying to be Michael friends. Jordan did lead the team to 17 points per game, and Bobby Knight coached the team to an 8-0 record and another Ooh. Olympic gold medal. But overall, it was their historic exhibition games against NBA All-Stars that were better remembered outside of the actual huh, Come here. Fast forward to the next season, Bird and Jordan would match up against each other for the first time in their All right, so this is this is a year later, bro. Next season, year later. Let's see. Careers in the NBA. Bird finished with 34 points, 8 rebounds and 5 assists, whilst Jordan in his rookie year finished with 26, 4 and 7. But once oh again, my. this is Larry Legend in his prime years, along with the Celtics who were dominant. Bird was still once again the MVP of the league, but the Celtics had lost in the NBA Finals to the Lakers, and Bird could see Jordan quickly becoming dominant in the league, with 28 points per game and averaging his rookie year, which has never been replicated. 28 points per game as a rookie. Oh yeah, everybody's seen it. Everybody's seen it. Who the fuck? Around this time, who was averaging 28 as a rookie? As a rookie? He just said it's never been he's never been done. So I don't want to see y'all in the comments. Oh, oh, Gerald Thompson did it. No, I don't want to hear that, bro. Jordan is great, bro. Like by Jordan's second season, he had broken his foot, allowing him to miss majority of the season. Damn. But this was actually one of the most important seasons for Damn. the Bird and Jordan rivalry. We know what happened next in the second season six playoffs. We've all seen it. This was the series where Jordan became what Larry Bird would call. That was God disguised as Michael Jordan. God. One more time. One more, I, I knew this clip was coming. One more time. It's where Jordan became One what Larry time. Bird would call. That was God disguised as Michael Jordan. God disguised as Michael Jordan. And the rest is history. Y'all favorite player saying that, bro. Y'all favorite player saying that, bro. The NBA, Larry the Legend is saying that it was God disguised in Jordan, bro. Like who who says that about a, another human being? You know he was he know he was just that that guy. He was Larry great. Bird and Jordan played against each other for twenty eight oh, yeah. games here. during hook, the regular hook. season. Larry Bird won seventeen of those games and Jordan only Damn. won eleven. But you can't really compare the two players. Damn. They both would play exceptionally well against each other. Jordan averaging thirty three and a half points per game, six rebounds and six. Damn. Assists. Oh my God! Hold on, I got. You feel me? I, I fuck with Larry Bird too, but I, I just gotta see this one for the street well against each other. Jordan averaging 33 and a half points per game, six rebounds and six assists, whilst Larry Bird would average 27 points, eight and a half rebounds and six and a half assists. That's they smooth, would meet twice in the playoffs, and the Chicago Bulls got swept each time, despite Jordan obliterating the Boston Celtics. But as we all know, we can't compare them. Because obviously Larry Bird was getting older and he phased out basically after the 1988 season where he started to have back issues. Jordan started to dominate the league during that time. 
And obviously Larry Bird was surrounded by excellent teammates and he won rings. Jordan came into a bottom rebuilding franchise that hadn't won. So the two were in completely different situations. And yes. Did y'all hear what he said, bro? Jordan came into a league, a, a bottom franchise, and made that shit one of the top teams, bro. We still talk about the Bulls to this day because of Jordan, bro. And the Bulls not really, I don't know what the Bulls doing. Not, I, they ain't won nothing in so long since Jordan, but you, you feel me? Yeah. Jordan really owned that. Obviously, Larry Bird was surrounded by excellent teammates and he won rings. Jordan came into a bottom rebuilding franchise that hadn't won. So the Damn. two were in completely different situations. And yes, Bird won more, but it's unfair to rank them at this point in their respective careers. This video was to show the level of respect that arguably the greatest player at the time had for this sophomore kid. Oh, no, we his way him, through the league. Larry Bird went from trash talking Jordan during the 1984 Olympics to calling him God disguised as Michael Jordan. That, that was, that's what I'm looking for. That, that's exactly what I'm looking for right there, bro. Trash talking to call him God, bro. Despite, you feel me, unfortunately, you know, Larry Bird got injured and Jordan took over, but he was going to take over regardless. It's Jordan. Uh, the more order he got, the better he just became, bro. Like, shit was crazy. And the best See what player else they got ever for. seen. Nobody like him. <laughs> Point blank. I never seen nobody play like he plays. And, uh, Talk your shit, twin. I mean, you, can, you can include all of them. That type of player can go to another level anytime he wants to. Probably the greatest player in the game right now. And this was all in just the span of two years. To put that into perspective, imagine LeBron James trash talking some college kid now. Oh, no, we ain't talking about LeBron right now, bro. We ain't talking about, that's another video for y'all. We ain't gonna get to the bronze situation. But, this was two years in, bro. That was y'all young, y'all young Larry Bird talking. Before all of the back issues, before all, yeah. That was that Larry Bird talking. So just, you you know, just keep that in mind, bro. But I had to, I had to pop this video out for y'all. I don't think, I, I never reacted to this video. It was a nice video for me. I hope y'all enjoyed it, you know what I'm saying? This, this gonna wrap it up right here. I ain't talking about Brian, bro. We talking about this guy right here. Yeah, this guy. He trash talked Jordan, and you feel me? Two years later, he called him God, bro. <sighs> Crazy. Crazy. But, man, make sure I subscribe. We on the road to 2,000 subscribers, like I said. Comment what y'all want to see. And we on to the next video.